We're going to get into this docuseries, man. It's time, it. time to get into it. Let's do it. Woo-wee. Yeah. This, man. <laughs> okay, so let's let's start from from the beginning with this. This story okay. is, 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 is it's like a movie shit. It's like you're in a movie like, what? Right, right, right. Right. <laughs> so, well, I'll, I'll let you... I'll let you tell it, but at the age of 12, mm-hmm. you witnessed mm-hmm. your biological, biological. father. Mm-hmm. Shoot and murder your mother. Yeah. 12 years old. 12 years old. Just that, that just the headline is like it's like you it's like you just want to dig more into it like what right so what could can you describe before we talk about you know what you've seen and how it went down mm-hmm. what was that can you describe what that day was like at first like what was that day like oh i remember it very well mm. it was saturday march 12th 1988 exact date you remember oh, yeah, how remember. could you forget a date yeah, like that yeah, i remember that very well <laughs> wow and i was at home and not too far from here east side east side <laughs> so for for those who know the columbus area i was on sixth avenue like the crumb park area so fifth six all that type of stuff mm. so i'm at the house and i'm watching the ncaa tournament and watching games like normal back when the floor models was popping had the floor model tv <laughs> so i'm watching the game and what and year is this 88 88 88 okay. so i'm watching the game and you know i'm just i'm probably getting my peanut butter and jelly on I'm smashing mom is uh she she left out with her boyfriend and that's the part i'll tell you about here in a little bit yeah mom so Ooh. my mom and her boyfriend are getting ready to head out <clears throat> and just as usual my mom would tell me if your dad calls and no, i ain't here and she would say that even if she was there, I ain't here. <laughs> I mean, there was never time she's there. She's never. Right. I'm not here. So y'all, y'all all live together. You, mom, and dad, or your dad? Did y'all live separately? Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I that, guess. I guess as a whole, I mean, this is the disclaimer. <laughs> there's, a, getting, there's a little detail here. What I'm getting ready to tell you. Oh God. It's so much deeper than what you even told. Yeah, my whole that it whole even yeah, it's just even deeper. It's even deeper. Wow. So let me go all the way back. <laughs> Yes. To come forward. Okay. So when I was 12, my dad had been in jail for at least five years. He said he was a convicted felon. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. he was out in the streets. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was he was getting in. Woo. So he had been in jail for at least five years, and that was the second time, I believe, that he was in prison. Not jail, but prison. And this was the first time he was in prison for murder. Wow. This murder actually made it into a book. There's a book. I'm not going to tell the name of it because I don't do no free advertising without that check. <laughs> but there's a, I'll tell you off camera. Okay. There's a book that you can find that tells the story of a young lady and her family as they were driving down Broad Street coming from graduation. They had came in town to see their daughter graduate. My dad and his crew fighting against some other crew, shooting back and forth across Broad Street. His bullet, they say, ended up shoot, killing her. So he went to jail for that. It was such a big deal that they made a a song about it, like a nationally song. Whoa. Yeah, it was a big old song called Thinking of Laura that was revolving around this young lady. So my dad went to jail for that. Mm. So while my dad was in jail, it was just me and my mom. And when my dad got out of jail, my mom had moved on. She had another boyfriend, ah. but my dad on some old, you know, Hey, I ain't got nowhere to go. You know what I'm going to do. And for whatever reason, my mom was like, well, you know, you can stay here on the couch for a little bit till you get yourself back on your feet. Well, she still got a boyfriend. <laughs> right. So I'm assuming my dad was just like, mm-hmm, yeah, I hear your couch. And he <laughs> probably sat on the couch till he was tired of sitting on the couch. And after a while he like, look, if I can't have you, Nobody can type deal. Mm. So now fast forward. Yeah. So, you know, my, my dad called that day. Where's your mom? She ain't here. My mom and I had just had a conversation. Get this of all things. <laughs> we had just had a conversation, an argument. She telling me tomorrow you going to church. 
Uh, <laughs> I'm like, church? Uh, <laughs> we don't never go to church. I mean, literally, we don't. We, oh, y'all never went to We never went to church. Like, we didn't go for Christmas, Easter, New Year, what, the bar mitzvah, the <laughs> baptism. We didn't go for nothing. I'm like, church? Yeah. Like, where is this coming from? Oh. Like, your boyfriend don't go to church. You don't go to church. I'm like, what? We're just out of nowhere. We're out of nowhere. <laughs> so they leave and go to the grocery store. And they gone, and now, like I said, I'm watching basketball, just doing my thing. And after a while, it get kind of late. So I'm just like, where's my mom at? They've been gone for a while. But I'm still in the basketball. You know how the tournament go. They got games on all day. Oh, yeah. You can fall asleep, wake up, another game. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm watching. And after a while, I do start to get worried. And for whatever reason, I was led to go into my mother's room. I probably had to climb up on something and look out her bedroom window. Mm. And when I look out her window, I see her boyfriend's car. I'm like, oh, okay, there's the car. You recognize the car. I recognize the car. And the car door is still open. Ah. And there's a bag of groceries on top of the car. Hmm. And there's a person laying on the ground with blood coming from it. Now, keep in mind, I had heard the gunshots. Mm. But in that area, gunshots was nothing. I mean, that's just the norm. Yeah. Sixth Avenue, Fifth Similar Avenue. Similar to me, how I grew up in Philly. <laughs> right. They, they put me to sleep. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm just okay. like, there's some gunshots. <laughs> Long name coming through the window. I guess we good. Yep. But like I said, I go out and look out the window, and I didn't think twice. Went on the back to basketball, but as it got later, now I'm thinking, okay, now something just like, I think that's my mom out there. Hmm. So then I go back and look again, and I'm like, I don't know. And I call my aunt. My mom's sister, I said, I think that's my mom out there. And she's just like, are you sure? I'm like, I'm not sure. And she's like, can you check? So I was like, I'll try. So I leave out the apartment and I go to the edge of the parking lot and I look as close as I can. And I'm just kind of froze. I can't move anymore. I'm 12. Yeah. Can't move anymore. Go back in the house. And I automatically start looking through my mom's things. Like, okay, where's her shoes? Where's her jacket? Because she would have this and she would have this. And I go through a period of, okay, that ain't her because this is here. Well, yes, it is because this is missing. And then I end up calling my aunt back and I said, I think that is my mom. Wow. So they ended up calling, you know, the police and come to find out what happened was my dad had parked on Fifth Avenue at the local bar, you know, doing his his thing. Then comes to our house and is basically hiding behind the building in the in the shadows. So as soon as they get out the car, he just starts shooting. So he shot my mom and he shot her boyfriend. And he's had several operations. And granted, this was 88. But mm. to this day, he still can't talk. Really? Yeah. It's the, my, the mom's boyfriend. Yeah. Mom's boyfriend. He still can't talk. And then my mother died. But he had enough strength. Her boyfriend had enough strength to stumble across the street, bang, and fell in my neighbor's door. Mm. And they ended up calling the police as well. Mm. So they called the police. And my aunt called, called the police. And yeah. So that was just the that night. And then as you can imagine... All of the cops and the detectives and all of the questions and, and me crying and all these people in your face and and all I remember, not all Man. I remember, but the next thing I remember, I just wanted to go to sleep. Really? Just too many questions, just too much going through my mind. I'm crying my eyes out. You're mentally exhausted. Yeah, mentally exhausted. I don't have a dad and a mom now because everyone mm. knows my dad did it. He left and went over like his grandma, I mean his mother, my grandma's house. And as soon as he come in the door, they are, what you did. Mm. Well, you better not. Have, they already knew. Damn. Yeah, they they knew it was him. Yeah, they knew it was him. Because at this point, I think it was on the news. So as soon as they say it her name. made news quick. Yeah, as soon as they say her name, like, they knew. The whole story, and I still have the article, made the front page of the Columbus Dispatch. Wow. Like, not no little article, but, like, the huge the whole picture. Story. That's where, if you see the pictures with the tomorrow, with the lady, with the tears coming down. Right. That's my aunt, my mother's only living sister, oh. testifying in court. Wow. So that was that pet I still like I said I still have that article. Man. So yeah, that was the day. Wow. Yeah, Jeez. Jeez. Welcome man. to twelve, right? <laughs> right. That's you're twelve years old. Right. Man. Yeah, man. Oh wow. That I I know we kind of talked about uh, your, your father a little bit as far as like the type of lifestyle he lived. What type of person was he? Was he? I mean, cause, I mean, I understand you probably can't speak a lot because he wasn't there or he was just too young. Like as far as you know, what type of person was he? I mean, he was in and out of prison, obviously. Yeah, but according to his own words, <laughs> he, he's a gangster. 
Gangster. And, and that's what he told me from his own mouth. He's really? like, I'm just a gangster. I've always been a gangster. Wow. And his brother, who passed not so long ago, my Uncle Ted, uh, he told me, my Uncle Ted talked like this, you know. And at the end of every sentence was, you know. So he's like, listen here, Lemire. He's like, you and Jerome, you come from a long line of strong arm robbers, pimps, and thieves, you know? Mm. So according to my dad's side of the family, that's just what they did. All the men. Was... Just, and not just the men. Because my, my grandmother, which is their mom, she so she had her she sold pills and she had her little private juke joints and all that type of stuff. So she got it in. And they're all from Cleveland. So, like, oh, like yeah, true Cleveland, not Cleveland. like Orangeville Highway, Cleveland. Cleveland is rough, man. Yeah, I've so, been up there. Yeah, so they're from Cleveland. So that's so that's why man. sometimes I feel sorry for him. Mm. And as I tell people, when they hear my story, they often look at me like the victim. And while I was the victim, I'm yeah. now the victor mm. because I've come out and I'm okay. Yeah. But I look at my dad as the victim mm. because you almost didn't have a choice based on how you grew up mm. and what was surrounding you. You almost didn't have, I mean, you, we already know you suffer from a lack of resources because you're black in the United States. Mm. And, <laughs> <laughs> the odds are already against you already. So, I mean, you already <laughs> don't know how to do half the stuff you need to do and don't have, yeah. have you, you just don't. Yeah. Not to mention, you know, who you surrounding yourself with, they influence you. Wow. So yeah. I feel bad for him. You know, he probably could have done a whole bunch of different things. I know he was a Golden Glove boxer. And, you know, that's what he really wanted to do. And I think before he was supposed to have one of his big fights, he had got locked up. Wow. He, was, he was really good with his hands. He was a welder. He was also a photographer, just like I am. Mm. So could have done a whole lot of things. But when you when, when the world around you is suffocating you, then you can either get on life support, which is, you know, get somewhere else by some other means. Or sometimes you just choke out and you just die, man. And not just physically, but just die in terms of your aspirations or your your drive. And you just be like, I'm just going to be a gangster, man. Yeah. If you got it, I'm going to steal it. You know, if, if I don't got it, I'm going to sell enough dope to get it. And that's just how I'm going to live. Wow. You know, so. As you was, I, I, I hate to get all detailed and graphical, <laughs> but <all> right. <laughs> as you was walking up to your mother's, you know, body mm-hmm. laying there pretty much just losing life or lifeless at that point mm-hmm. what was i know you're 12 years old like what's like you're looking at your your mother's dead mm-hmm. and you just seeing the blood just what's in your head at that moment if you can recall yeah I mean, and it wasn't and i remember very vividly that I, I wasn't scared like oh my gosh i can't do it i just literally couldn't move you just froze i, I just got as far as i could get which is probably farther than probably a lot of people would get but uh, I, I just got as far as I could get, and I mean that was pretty much it. Wow! So and you went back then, just, called. Yeah, I just went back in. But the, the thing that wow. was that was so Man. heavy, as that is heavy, is as I tell people sometimes, and, and it sounds kind of weird, so I have to explain it. Mm. Is that wasn't the hardest part for me? Really? That, that wasn't actually hard. And here's what I mean. Wow! Is when somebody's killed, and it just happens, you just forced to deal with it. You don't have no choice. You got no time to think. You got no time to think. You just got to deal with it. Or you got to react or whatever. Now, if somebody had been suffering for a while, you could prepare yourself for it. To me, that's difficult because you're seeing it every day. And you used to have your mind. Now, mom doesn't know who I am. And dad keeps falling. And and he's on this. And that that would be tough. But to me, I just had to deal with it so I didn't have any choice. Mm. But what was more difficult for me was when I had to testify against him in court. I was, I was the key witness in the murder trial. That's right. So that, that was difficult for me. Wow. And I remember when my day on the stand, I only had one day on the stand. I even remember what I had on. Oh, my goodness. And I remember yeah. I had on my, my black khaki pants that was kind of ashy looking. They wouldn't even black no more. <laughs> I had on my, uh, had a mainly green sweater Jeez. that had Jamaica on it, which is funny because I love Jamaica and I always say, Emma. Yeah, <laughs> so I got Jamaica on on my sweater, and I remember being in the courtroom, and I'm literally frozen. All I can do is look at the attorney. 
I can't look to the left. I can't look to the right. And when they made me look at my dad and point at my dad, when they said, do you see him in this courtroom? And I had, and they, they were very specific when we were going, kind of going through the, the mock-up, if you will, that you have to look at your dad and you have to point and say that's him. That was difficult. I had to look at my dad, and that was the, probably the first time I've seen him since, who knows, and I had to point and say, that's the man that killed my mother. That was difficult. Mm. That was much more difficult than the murder itself because, like I said, I just had to react to it. Yeah. But now nowadays, the kids, that's snitching. <laughs> I had snitch, I snitched on my dad. You ain't supposed to snitch on your own. Right. So I had to look and point him out. That was difficult. Wow. And then the other difficult portion of that is when I said what he told me. And what happened was their defense was that it was self-defense. My dad's team was alleging that and it was just a struggle. He was defending himself against the boyfriend. Gun went off. He was alleging that. Mm. But my dad had told me something that at the time I didn't think anything of, but I remembered it. And when I told my attorneys, that was it. Because, like I said, he was alleging that it was self-defense. But they said, turn to the judge and tell the judge what your dad told you. Mm. And I said, my dad told me, and this is what he, him and I and my grandpa, which is his dad, was riding the car going somewhere. My dad told me, if something ever happens to your mother... Don't ever let anybody tell you that I did it. Really? Wow. So that destroyed your whole defense that it was self-defense. This was premeditated. Exactly. You told him that I'm going to basically do something to your mother, yeah. but don't believe we'll folks. 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 Yeah. So <laughs> that, and I remember Dang. the judge sat up and he swallowed and he looked over at my dad and looked, that was the rap. Now they still got to go through the whole jury process, but in his mind, yeah, that what, right there, right? What are we arguing about? Yeah, you know, it's that, over. That was so. That was difficult. Wow. That was difficult to re, to recall that or to say that. I mean, you got a courtroom full of people. Like the news is there. My family's there. My dad's side of the family is there. Man. My dad is in the courtroom. I mean, this whole thing is publicized. Yeah, and this trial took place in like '89. So this is like a year later. Yeah, I'm born. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Represent. <laughs> So, yeah, this took place a whole year later. Wow. And like I said earlier, that picture of my auntie uh, was taken by, you know, the photographer who was on the front page of the Columbus Dispatch when the verdict was read. So that's when the verdict that came, the verdict that came. he was guilty and yeah. she started crying. Yeah. And he almost got the electric chair. Woo. Yeah. I thought I was going to ask, you know what? It's so much more we got. We're going to take a break. All right. All right. <laughs> I love people on the edges. He's like, right, right, right. <laughs> and what happened next? Yeah, right. Got to get you the cliffhanger. Right, right. Uh, we're going to take a break. We got, as you can tell, a lot more to talk about mm -hmm. with this story and a little bit more after that. Um, let them know where they can, <laughs> can find you and connect with you because I'm pretty sure right now they want to like, where can we? Right, right, right. <laughs> Go ahead, plug away. So, yes, you can find more about me and the, the documentary that we're working on, which is called Tomorrow on YouTube at LTD channel 614. You can also connect with me on Facebook and IG at the same. Uh, please make sure that you not only uh, take a look at what we're doing, but if you're able to contribute as well, that's probably like my shameless plug. But, <laughs> but if you've ever tried to do a movie before, man, ain't cheap. Oh, it ain't like we doing no podcast and you just recording. You know, already, man, it's expensive. It, dude, that, it's a production. Come on, y'all hit the, hit the button, pay yeah. now, pay later. Give me a check. Give me a something. Yeah. Roll coin, something. Help a brother out. Help a brother out. Right. Make sure y'all follow the podcast uh, on Instagram, Facebook, subscribe on YouTube and uh, any of your podcasting listening app platforms uh don't go nowhere we got a lot more to talk about with mirror tv right here with lemire t yeah. <laughs> right in his old stumping grounds mm -hmm. um uh, if you guys are enjoying the podcast right now, I'm pretty sure you're at the edge of your seats. <laughs> uh, make sure you go ahead, subscribe, follow, listen, so you don't more, so so you don't miss more great episodes like this. <laughs> so before we take the break, um, 
we were you were telling us about the you testifying mm-hmm. against your your dad and how that was the what you explained was the most hardest thing right. uh, compared to seeing your mother. Mm-hmm. You said you know telling the judge and tell him, you know, what the, what your dad told you in that car, that was the hardest thing to do. Yeah. And you were telling me, uh, off air while we was at break about the, the picture mm-hmm. that was taken in the courtroom the day of the, of that, the uh, verdict, yeah. yeah, the verdict mm-hmm. of your aunt, uh, a photographer caught her, uh, tearing right. as the verdict was being read mm-hmm. and you're going to use that, that picture as the the cover for the docu series. Yeah. Go ahead and, and explain that. So what we done is because the, this project is more than just me telling my story. And it's more than just, you know, me making a movie or a filmmaker or anything like that. Yeah. But I'm on a mission. Yeah. And I'm on a mission to help my family members to be okay with the things that happen. Mm. To, to, to forgive but not forget. Mm. And so what I said is that picture, since it is the most famous picture in my family, yeah. and it's always been such a sur- source of hurt, I'm going to take that picture. We're going to flip the game a little bit. And I took that picture and behind it and on the sides of it, we made a collage of different pictures when I was younger, my mom and her sisters, things of that nature. And we're going to make it be happy now yeah. so that when people look at it, they'll, they won't just think of the trial, but they'll look at it and see all the pictures behind it and say, that's the picture that represents this documentary that my cousin, that my brother, that my nephew yeah. is working on. We're so proud of him for being able to tell his story, to be able to impact somebody else, to help somebody else who's going through, who had, who may go through it. We're going to use that for the good instead of just looking at it and being sorrowful all the yeah. time. So, so when you were testifying against your dad, right? Mm-hmm. I just thought about this. Like, I know you said it was hard, but like, you, cause your father is in that in the courtroom right. while you were testifying. Yeah. Are you kind of like looking at dad as you were? No. They, they, did they instruct you to like look at this person? Don't look at dad. We, we need you to. Yeah. There was a little bit of that. There was when you're going through, I don't know what they call it, but this, I call it a coaching. Mm. When they're, you know, we're going to ask you this and they're going to ask you and they're going to probably come back and try to ask you this. Make sure you do this. Make sure you, just like you see on TV, yeah. you're going through all of those things. They're prepping you. Yeah, they're prepping me. Yeah. So they said. 12 years old. Yeah, exactly. Being prepped for, they testify against your dad if, if possible. How, <laughs> how do you do that? But right. I'm doing it. Man. And I, you know, they wanted me to keep my eyes on the attorney. So that I didn't get emotional or whatever, have you keep your eyes on him, answer the questions that they ask you, mm. you know, don't elaborate, don't go in depth because you can open up something else that you don't want to open up for them to come back or whatever. Wow. So you know, I was instructed to look at them, but I had to look at him when I had to point out, do you see that man in the courtroom? I had to point at him then <sighs> uh, and look at him then. And I remember him looking back at me just kind of like, you know. I was gonna say, what yeah, was just you? looking at you like you're looking at your son. There was no yeah. remorse. There was no tear. There was no oh. There was just so like, he just like, he yeah. just looking at you like all right. Yeah, he just looking at me like. But that that wow. all goes into who he is because mm-hmm. as I read in that book that I talked about earlier, come to find out that he was a handful in the courtroom. Like he was just standing up, blurting out stuff, and they was trying to get. He wasn't cooperating. He was just. I mean, he just. So it's one thing to be on trial for murder mm. and to be claiming his self defense, <laughs> but when you just gonna be like, I ain't sitting down. Y'all ain't putting these cuffs on me. Where y'all taking me? And you just doing that? Right. Like, do you know? Like, you don't look good right now. Dude, like, this come is on, not man. helping you at all. I mean, this trial is just a waste of taxpayer time at this point. Just <laughs> right. send him to jail. Let's finish the trial without him. It's super defensive. Yeah, <laughs> and like I mentioned earlier. Earlier, mm. you know, he was going to get the electric chair. And yeah, so. there was 12 jurors, and all 12 jurors have to agree that he should get the chair. Okay. Which they did initially. Mm. But then one of the jurors changed their mind at the last minute. And for mm. and for him to get the chair, it had to be unanimous. Mm. So it went from him get and it, to get the chair is a big deal now. 
Yeah. But let alone in 89. Oh, he man. He was getting ready to get the chair in 89 in Ohio, such a conservative <laughs> state like right. Ohio. This ain't Texas. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, they, they changed their mind at the last minute, which automatically makes means he's getting 30 years for the murder. That's so got, that's the default. He gets 30 years yeah. for the murder. Then he got so many for the attempted murder of my mother's boyfriend. He got so many for having a weapon because he's a felon, shouldn't have a firearm. Then you get so many because you broke the restraining order. Oh, I mean, man. yeah, it's just you just pouted. And it was all to run concurrent. So it ain't like you get no time off. You just bow, 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 bow. This is no parole. Yeah, just, he's just, you know, he's going to be in there. Just there. So, oh, man. Yeah, a, who did you feel like, like it was your fault that you sent dad away? Never felt like that. I did feel like it was my fault that I allowed him to kill my mother. Did you blame yourself? Yeah, I blame myself because before that time, as very typical with domestic violence is it the it, it, it starts with something right and my dad used to hit my mom all the time like oh, her eye, her mind was her eye was black all the time Jeez. dark sunglasses in the middle of the day i mean that was the norm so he's regularly abusive yeah yeah all the time Jeez. and like i said he was a boxer so it wasn't oh, just like God. no regular old just dude just slapping like he, he, he's punching whew. so that was the norm so because of that, I always slept with a butcher knife underneath my pillow. Did you? And I, this is at 12. I would always say to myself, and this is how crazy your surroundings can be, because at 12, my mentality constantly was, how am I going to kill my dad? Really? I knew that I had to take that knife and stab him in the chest, but I knew that if I didn't kill him, he was going to kill both of us. So wow. I would literally sit in the bed and have dreams about, okay, I got to put it in him, but then I got to kind of yank it up. To get like hit one of the organs, I can't just stab him and just sit there and be like, "Oh, what am I going to do?" I was literally thinking about how I'm going to kill my dad, wow. because at night I would hear them arguing and fussing and fighting all the time, and I got tired of it. Mm. So literally, every night I'm just like, "Okay, tonight's the night. I'm going to bust in there with this knife and I'm going to kill him tonight." Mm. And I just couldn't build up the strength to do it. Never but did. every night I would say that this is what we'll do every night, but because I wasn't able in my mind, I wasn't strong enough to do it. I felt like. I let him kill my mom because mm. I knew I knew it was gonna happen. I should have killed him first. You felt you could have prevented, yeah. prevented it if yeah. he was been a big boy. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, wow. and that was, and I tell my kids that this all the time. That was the last time in my life I decided that I was gonna be afraid. Really? Ever since then, I'm like, I, yeah, I'm not scared of nothing. And it ain't wow. like I'm trying to be tough. Yeah. I'm just, I mean, literally, I'm just not afraid of anything. Right. It doesn't matter what it is. I mean, somebody pull a gun on me. I'm hey, just, pull I'm it. Just, yeah, I'm just, no, I ain't stupid <laughs> either. I ain't no fool. Here, put it to my, what you gonna do? It ain't yeah. no TV movie. I ain't, you know, right. but at the same time, I'm just, I'm just not afraid. I just, I can't think of a situation where I've been in. I'm just like, I'm scared. Like, I'm just, I'm just not. Wow. I'm just not. Yeah. yeah, we gonna do this. That's we yeah, gonna do it. Whatever you know, <laughs> you better get out of here with that gun, man. I'm gonna give you a couple seconds, man. You wasting your time, man. I'm about to go in here and get me a Pepsi or something, man. You better, better go somewhere. You want my money, man? You better, man. I'm telling you, man. You better go somewhere, man. You yeah. really, you really don't want me to snap back to where are you? You please go somewhere, man. I'm trying to help you, man. Please right. go somewhere, man. Please. Right. I done been through some yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want me to have to uh, unleash it, man. Please go somewhere, please, bro. Wow. Please. So at nine years old, you would you would hear your your dad abusing your mother and fighting, going at, it, and he would black her eye and all types of stuff, and you would would literally talk to yourself into like, "This is how I have to take him out with this knife." Wow, it was my man. job. Because, like I said, I knew that if I didn't do it, he was going to kill us both. So at that you, time, you he, could foresee that that it would get to the point oh where yeah. he would probably kill my mother. Oh yeah, because I mean, you just—I mean, how much time can you hit somebody? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah, I guess and I don't hit women, never have. But yeah. I'm assuming your mentality is I'm going to make you do what I want you to do or say or whatever. So when you do it, and then after some point when they revert back and you hit them again, I mean, that, that's got to get old at some point. Yeah. Just like a parent, you get tired of whooping your child. At some point, I'm done whooping you. Give me that PlayStation. Give me that phone. You know, you ain't going to keep doing the same stuff. Yeah. So I just assume that, you know, at some point, you'll stop hitting her and you'll probably kill her at some point. Yeah. Did you ever, like, like ask your mom at the young age, mom, just leave. Just let's just leave that. And like, no. what or is it just too young to? She, she, I know she was. Did she try to leave? She, she was, was afraid. Fearful. Yeah, she was afraid. I, I think she knew if that, she that he was he was going to try and kill her. I think she knew that. Hence, what the restraining orders. Yeah. And I remember we went to live in a hotel for a little bit. But in my mind, at twelve, I'm just like, mom, we can't keep living in no hotel. Like we, 
I mean, I would literally get off the school bus and my mom would meet me at the school bus and we'd go right downtown to the hotel. Wow. Like, we can't keep doing this. We have an apartment. Yeah. And we pay, and you work at a job, you probably make a minimum wage. I knew that much. Yeah. We can't afford to be paying for the hotel and, and the apartment. I mean, yeah. we can't keep running from this dude. All right. But he was just one of them kind of cats, like, how you going to run from that dude? And he in the streets, and who know who he connected to? And, I mean, I'm used to seeing guns at the house behind the door. He oh, uh, man. Crack, crack vials, he hiding here. I mean, I'm just used to that stuff. Wow. You, can't run, you can't run from that kind yeah, of dude. Yeah, power yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah how you have a, a brother who shares the same name as me shout out to you jerome <laughs> uh, is, is he is he older or younger younger than so he didn't he wasn't like like how much younger is he older a couple so he, years he's four and a half years younger okay so so you got to see more than he yeah, did yeah Wow. And it's How? funny because that's the next portion of the story. Ah, yes. Where it gets even deeper. Yes. Because he and I have the same dad, but we have different mothers. Oh. As, as we know, it's typical in the inner city, <laughs> black folk, you know, right. it's just the norm. <laughs> that's my half brother. Yeah. yeah that's, but, you know, it's just a brother. brother it's, yeah. yeah it's just my brother. At that time, it's my brother. It's my brother. <laughs> so when, when this happened, when my dad killed my mother, Rome's mom got scared mm-hmm. and thought, my dad was coming after her next. Mm. So she took Rome. And she, Logical thinking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so she took Rome and she bounced. She left. Oh, she, she got out she, of there. Not just out of there, but they went to Alabama. Damn. So when Rome left and they went to Alabama, he was six. The next time I saw Rome, he was 18. Wow. So he was there the whole time. So he doesn't remember the trial, any of that stuff. I mean, when I was 12, he was, he was younger. He doesn't remember any of that stuff. Damn. So all I knew at that time was that I had a brother named Jerome, didn't know what his last name was. I knew he looked very similar to me, felt like he was about five, six years younger than me, but that was it. Wow. And all that time I had been looking for him. So mm. I'm running around the city. I mean, literally playing with my friends. We'd be out somewhere, you know, you at the open gym playing ball. And I'd just be looking at folks like, yeah. I look like it could be my brother, but not ain't him. He looked, and I mean, that was my mentality wow. all the time. Riding the bus, going downtown, that dude looked like that could be my brother. Maybe I should just ask him. No, not really. Yeah. I mean, I'm always looking for them. Wow. And I have been looking for them, for, for him in particular, uh, since for that time until this one moment. Mm. And this was another thing that I put on my list of the hardest things for me to do at that time. Oh, boy. I'm over a friend of mine's house, young lady, just a friend. <laughs> and her mom was just like, why don't you call the prison where your dad is and see if you can get like a contact list of the names he gave when he went to jail? I'm mm. like, okay, that makes sense. No one's ever given me that avenue because she knew I was looking for yeah. my brothers. All right. You're so, older now. I'm older now. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that, that sounds good. I'm in my 20s, maybe 24 or something like that. Mm. So I'm like, okay, sounds good. Let me call the prison. I call the prison. And I remember getting on the spiel, you know, my dad killed my mom. He's locked up in his prison. It's his name. I'm his son. Da, 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 da. So they said, hold on a second. Put me on hold. And guess what happens next? They get your dad? He got, he got on the phone. Wow. That never <laughs> happens. <laughs> hold on. Real Dude, quick. how do you call the prison? And whatever the prison line is, they put your dad on the phone like he's sitting next to him, like watching TV or something. Oh, he's watching the game. There right. you go. <laughs> he is available. All right, right. Here he is. Oh, well, I'm glad you You're mentioned like, him. He's, hello? He's right here oh. drinking some juice. Here he is. Wow. So he gets on the phone, and I hear his voice. And that's the first time I've seen, heard from him since the courtroom. Uh, I imagine. You, what, what could you say? Like, so what the, you just stuck like? So the first thing I hello? say was, <laughs> where are my brothers? Mm. And he's just like, who's this? I'm just like, where are my brothers? And he's trying to figure out who he's talking to. I'm like, this is Lemire. Mm. He's like, Lemire? He's like, I, I never thought you would want to talk to me. Wow. I, I said, I don't. I just want to know where my brothers are. Mm. I'm trying to find them. I need to know where my brothers are. They gave me this list of these people. Who is this? Who's this Vincent Eldridge? He's just like, that's your oldest brother, Tyke. I'm like, oh, I've, I've only ever known him by Tyke. I didn't know his name was Vincent or Eldridge. I'm like, okay, who's this lady? Wow. Oh, that's your grandma. Who's this? That's your Aunt Kitty. Who's this? I'm like, okay, and who's this? Is your other auntie? And so the, he gave me the information and gave me some numbers, and I just start calling numbers. 
Wow. And I call Juan, my aunt, and I'm just like, you know, I'm kind of telling her the story. She's just like, oh, Jerome just left. He out running around doing something, something. Give me your number. I have him call you when he get in. Oh, wow. And this, is, this has been 12 years. Damn. So <laughs> he calls me when he gets in. Wow. I don't even remember how we started. <laughs> but we just on the phone and we just kind of giggling and just. And, you know, underneath my lip, I've kind of got like this V-shaped little thing with my, and he asked me, he's like, you got that thing under your lip too? I'm like, yeah, I do. <laughs> I mean, we literally just, we're, we're really connecting. Wow. And we made arrangements to meet at the recreation center in Brittany Hills, mm. at, bottom, at the bottom of the hill, for those who know Brittany Hills, yeah. the HP. <laughs> yeah. So we met at the bottom of the hill, and we've been tight ever since, man. Wow. Is he still out in Alabama? Or he no, moved, he's here. He's moved back. Yeah, he moved back. He moved back the week before... <clears throat> His birthday, week before his 18th birthday. Wow. Yeah, he's been here ever since. Damn, and y'all look alike? Yeah, we do. Damn. Yeah. So if we see y'all two together, like, yeah, we, yeah, y'all brothers. We could, like, so, we could tell we certain it, features. It's funny, yeah, because <laughs> my, my wife used to think we didn't look like, alike at all. Uh, I'm like, hold on now, what you mean we don't look like at all? <laughs> and she says, now that I've got, we've gotten older, now we look more alike. Mm. But, yeah, you can definitely tell we're related. Yeah. So. so 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 after that that whole experience the trial now uh it's time for your life to go on. Mm-hmm. Your your father is in prison. Right. Mother's passed. Right. And in your your interview with um uh show 83 formerly mm-hmm. right. <laughs> show 83 <laughs> uh on WTMH online radio you were saying that you you gave because at that time your aunt mm-hmm. became your caretaker, right? And you said you put her through hell. <laughs> you said you put that I'm poor so sorry, you put that poor woman through so the sorry. through a lot. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what what was you said you said you felt like she didn't like you, but as you got older, you realized what she was trying to do with you. <laughs> so yeah, that, that's a long road to that. Yeah. And here's what happened right when my mother was killed. I went to go live with my grandma, who is my, you know, my mom's mom. Yeah. My my grandma had three daughters, didn't have any sons. Mm. And my mom was the baby. So I went to go live with my grandmother. And I'm assuming she probably got, you know, some type of financial compensation with my mother being killed because I knew there was some inheritance for me later on. I knew that mm. because we went from my grandma lived in Chesterfield. Like we talked about earlier out, <laughs> out in the project, she <laughs> lived in Chesterfield on the top floor of the building. Oh, Lord. She lived in Chesterfield. And all of a sudden now we in a house <laughs> like this got many bedrooms. And it's so big that the two of us don't need to be there by ourselves because it's huge. Oh, man. So I knew some bread had to come in yeah. somewhere. OK, we done leveled up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we leveled all the way up. I'm like, where are we? I don't even know where we are. So I'm living with her, Mm. and she died just a few months later. Oh, man. She died of pneumonia. Oh, She had got sick, went to the hospital, and never came back. Damn. So now I'm like, okay, now my mom's gone, and her her mom's gone. So then I had to go stay with my other, my aunt who is my mother's oldest sister. Ah. So I went to stay with her, and now I'm with her. I have my cousin Sean, who's in the, the, the movie, the documentary, and my mm. cousin Brandy. So I'm staying with both of them. And we are in that house that's not too far from here, right on the outside of Chesterfield. Oh, wow. So we're still in the same area. <laughs> and I go live with her, and she died a few months later. She, came, she came out of remission from her cancer. Oh, she died a few goodness. months later. So then, jeez. So now it's me and my cousin Brandy who went to go stay with my aunt, who's the one you're talking about, my mother's only living sister. Wow. So not only did my God. aunt, my aunt, <laughs> not only is my aunt missing Ooh. her, both of her sisters and her mother, but now she's got to take on both their kids two of their kids and we all living together and ain't none of us got no counseling ain't none of us talked about none of this stuff we just all dealing with it our own ways and that's where everything came from i'm hurting because i'm missing my mother and father for my foundational years of being a pre-man 
we're going through this thing where she's hurting and I'm hurting. You know, I can't understand what she's going through. She can't understand what I'm going through because I'm not trying to be understood. I just want to be left alone. Yeah. And there was a lot of tension. Yeah, and trying to talk. And... Yeah, we're just, I mean, it was just a lot, man. And then I'm thinking, you know, I'm supposed to be getting some kind of money. You know, I ain't getting no money. I'm thinking, you know, the money that's coming for Social Security, that money's supposed to be mine. Like, what you doing? <laughs> Buying groceries and paying bills. That's my bread. But we're not having those conversations. Yeah. But how do you have that conversation? Right. With your mom, let alone your aunt. Right. You know, so that that's another source of my, you know, frustration. I'm thinking, you know, I'm supposed to be getting this money because at the time I wasn't old enough to get a job. Mm. And my cousin, Brian, who's also in the documentary, who's a year or so older than me, he was always working. So he come fresh and he got the this, he got the that. Uh, and I'm just like, man, I can't work. I ain't got nothing. And where my money at that's coming for this check every month. You yeah. know what, man? I'm frustrated, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I want answers. Right. So I'm like, I got 50. I need to double it up. I need 100. I need an eight ball. And I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm at it, man. Woo. Just because we just not, we, and I'm not trying to communicate. I was very clear that I did not want to be understood. Mm. I didn't want to be talk to i just wanted to be left alone leave yeah. me alone yeah you know, don't call me when dinner's ready right. and outside of that just leave me alone wow yeah. how did you because i imagine like especially like in, in the black community like something that that happens to to like a kid that young there's obviously trauma there but then there there's a lot of cases where that child boy or girl they grow up and they follow that same path or it's just their life is just completely just chaos. Right. Like how how did you avoid that going into that that lifestyle? Or because because history shows like you say like your your dad just falling right in line. Right. This is this is what we did. Mm -hmm. You on the other hand you you know <laughs> I'm you could have easily just. Right, and I was, I was, but <laughs> you, when my mother was alive, I was along that path. Uh, now, I wasn't so crazy where I'm, you know, gun -toting. Deep and heavy into yeah, it. Yeah, but I mean, I was on definitely on that trajectory, yeah. you know, with not having a dad in the house, my mom working as much. I was definitely on that path. Yeah. Uh, juvenile delinquent in the making. Mm. So I think part of what kind of steered me away was the tragedy. Ah. It'd be different if I'm just watching my dad in his heyday, mm. getting it in. And then it looks appealing. Right. But when it's tragedy, it's like, you know what? Well, I have to make the separation. Mm -hmm. I made the separation when I testified against him in court. Right. There was never going to be a connection after that. I mean, you snitched on me, dude. You're the reason why I'm in here. <laughs> right. I said it was self-defense. I meant it. You know? Yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah. So that was part of it. And, and then the other portion of it, I have to say, because sometimes it gets kind of overshadowed, I heard it for a long time. Mm. So it wasn't like I just kind of snapped out of it like I'm better. Like, dude, I was a mess. Man. And not only was I a mess, I put everybody through it who had any type of affiliation with me. Man. Young ladies I was dating, my homeboys. I mean, I put everybody through it. Man. I was a bully. I, I was the starter coat thief back in the day. Oh, man. Selling drugs. I mean, I'm interstate, no license, no insurance, a car it registered in somebody else's name with fake social security number pounds of weed back and forth on the Ooh. highway. I mean, I'm just reckless, just didn't care. And and all the while, I'm just like, it's my duty to kill my dad when he get out of jail. God, That still. was my mission in life. Like, he gonna get out. I must do it. Can't nobody else do it. I gotta do it. It's only right. You killed my mom. I kill you. I should have did it when I was 12. It's only right that I do it. That was my mentality for forever. Wow. Until... It got to a point in, and this, now granted, I've gone to college and I went to two different HBCUs. I went to Central State. I went to Wilberforce. I went to Wilberforce. Woo! <laughs> yeah, I went, to, I went to them both. Yeah. So, you know, and that's where I met my then fiance, but now ah, wife. So okay. it wasn't until, uh, you know, dealing with her and listening to her more than anything, mm. where I, I got to a point where I needed to, to talk mm. and to heal and to open up. Sure. And that's when I actually started sharing. But before then, I couldn't talk about it. Yeah. Uh, people knew what happened. But, I mean, I would start off and I'd be like this. Yeah. I, just, I mean, I just couldn't get through it. Wow. And it took years and years and years 
just to get to a point where I just didn't hate anymore mm. and I wasn't bitter and I wasn't a detriment. I mean, I was so slick where you would have thought we was friends and yeah, I befriended you, but I really didn't care nothing about you like that. I mean, I can, I can cut you off at any point in time if I got killed. I mean, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was cordial and I was cool, but in the back of my mind, I'm just like, we, we yeah. been, you know, when I, like when I left college and everybody just, I'll oh, keep in touch. I, I, I don't, I don't need to keep in touch with nobody. Like, right. I don't need to talk to any of you. Yeah. And we was road dolls and kicked it, but I just, I don't need to talk to anybody. Like we're, we're done. Next chapter, move on. I was, I mean, just, you could just cut them off yeah, like that because things was cut off for me like that. Mm. You know, whether it was my mom, yeah, whether it's my auntie, whether yeah. it's my grandma, stuff just so it was nothing for me. Just, I mean, you and I could be cool and we could have an argument, and I'm cutting you off for the rest of your right. life. I don't ever need to talk wow. to you, and it could just be an argument. But I don't ever need to talk to you ever again, and I'm cool with that. Cause no, no big deal, it's, man. It's because of that same thing that happened when you were like, well. Hey. <laughs> so, the, so the thing that I wow. like to tell people is too many times when things happen in life, we focus on the perpetrator and not the victim. Mm. And here's what I mean, though. Sometimes the victim in my mother's case was killed. Yeah. But what about the 12 year old child who doesn't have his parents anymore? Everybody focuses on my dad. Right. You're talking about the whole trial is based on him going to jail. Yeah. And then afterward, you know, it's all about what he did in the paper. But nobody ever came to see where's right. you know, social services, where's children's services. It's like, where's hello. Some, yeah, where's some psychiatrists? <laughs> where's the support? Where's the shit? Somebody should have been checking on me like at least every six months, a year up until they could sign off and say, OK, he's better. Yeah. Because I could have really hurt somebody. Yeah. And then somebody who would have been hurt would have been like, well, it makes sense why he hurt me yeah. because he this and this and this. And it was never addressed. Yeah, and that's why I asked, like, how did you like. <laughs> <laughs> not so, you could have so, yeah. you could have easily just like I'm offing everybody right 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 yeah <laughs> I'm, all, all y'all got to pay <laughs> right and, and then what helped me you know but my, my wife helped me to open up but what helped me to get to a better place where we can talk now mm. is just my connection with the Lord wow right. I had to have it now everyone right. we talked about it earlier probably yeah. probably people think I'm bashing the church and I'm standing outside the church with spray paint or something like that they pick it signs yeah exactly. <laughs> But the reality of it is, is I needed God to work on me, mm. fix me and change me. And everyone's got their own story. And some people be like, oh, that's make believe in fairy tales. But I don't care what it is. Let's take let's go away from spirituality. Yeah. If I say, I don't know, this bottle of juice on the floor has helped me to be a better person. <laughs> and I believe that. Then who are you to go, go against that bottle of juice? <laughs> right. Whether you want to drink it or not. Whether yeah. you got the money to afford it, whether you got a uh, stock in another company that's a rival, mm. if I say that this juice has made me whole and made me better, then I give props to that juice and right. I'm going to do a commercial for it and so forth and so forth. Right. <laughs> so if I say that my relationship with God helped me, you don't have to have that relationship. You ain't got to believe. You ain't got to read. You ain't got to nothing. Right. That's my story. Yeah. And while we can debate over the Bible, and right. while we can debate over the King James Version or the New International Version <laughs> yeah. or Pentecostal and Baptist, we cannot debate my testimony. Uh, we cannot debate what I feel changed me and made me a different person. That's your story. That's my story. We can't debate it. Yeah. And we also can't debate people who know me from the past, who know me now. Mm. They'd be like, dude, you are like, I never saw this coming. Wow. We can't debate that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they'll, they, they amaze me sometimes. Like, dude, you used to... And I'd be like, man, I forgot I used to do that. Do I need to apologize? I'm sorry, man. I don't know if I did anything to you, but my bad. Right. But we can't, we can't debate that. Damn. So I needed God to literally unharden my heart right. and to fix me. It's like, no, you still got some more mm. stuff. Still need to. You you can got over some stuff, but it's still some mm. other. I got to get this out. I got to take this out. You can never take this into a marriage. Yeah. You can never Ooh. have no children with this. I got to remove this. You got to remove this. And I got to teach you how to use this when it's necessary. This is when it's necessary. He, he just had to work on it, man. Just tear me all the way down man. to make me up to where I can say, okay. Man. Now I'm good. Now I can share on the Cloth Talk podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I can share with anybody yeah. without the tears and the emotion right. like I used to have. Yeah. So, long wow. term. Man, can you imagine being a father still having that in you? No. <laughs> Jeez, man. No. I said put it down. Right, right. Ow. Right, oh. Right. <laughs> Damn, he's five. Uh, right, right, right. <laughs> you going to do what I say. Right, you know? man. Mm-hmm. 
Wow. So so it sounds like your 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 wife. What's her name? Let's shut her out. <laughs> I don't know if she wants. Oh, see, is she yeah, yeah, more yeah, reclusive? Yeah. Okay, well, shout out to I the was, lovely I wife. I won't say she reclusive. That's just not her thing. Okay, don't talk about that. But me. that's the beauty. That's the yes. beauty. Because while I'm out here and doing, somebody's got to you know yeah. be level headed. Somebody yeah. better look, dude. That's right. Podcast tomorrow. Tonight is family night. That's right. right. Okay. Got to have that. Yeah, right. Yeah, Stop yeah. recording, brother. And come up here and watch this movie. There with you us. go. Like, okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, what I was going to say, it sounded like she was. Did, did she was she kind of the one that kind of introduced you to the re- religion? No, and no. Was she religious? No, I, I introduced her. Really? What mo- many people don't know about me is Ooh. I had always considered myself to be Muslim. Ah. I studied Islam ah. to a point where you know I may declare shahada, which is the equivalent of being baptized. Okay. When I was at and at Wilberforce, mm-hmm. I wore the kufi on my head. Yeah. You know, I went to Juma prayer on Friday. I made oh, salat. I mean, wow. I was I was Muslim. Wow! I didn't know anything about the Bible. Mm. I didn't know anything about a scripture. If you could have told me, well, everybody know John three sixteen, I would have been like, not me. I didn't right. know any of this story. I mean, I didn't know any of the people in the Bible. I didn't know any of it. Yeah. But here's what got me. Wow. My brother, Rome, got into the Lord. And he came into the Lord first. Mm. And now, knowing what I know, you know, he was praying for me, trying to get me to convert, to give my life into the Lord, and these different things. And every time he tried to talk to me about Christianity, I'm like, I got to go to the mosque. <laughs> He's driving me to the mosque. But here's what ended up happening. I'm going to the mosque. And I'm looking for more. Uh, I'm looking for literally, I needed someone to grab a hold of me and say, hey, young brother, let me teach you this. Yeah. Let me show you this. Yeah. Let me teach you what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong. Let me guide you. Let me mentor you. I needed that. And I was just going to the mosque and I would literally leave the mosque and be on the bus freaking my black and mouth. <laughs> going back to where I came from. There was no change. Mm. And every time he trying to talk to me about it, I'm like, oh, you with this corny church stuff again, dude. Right. I'm like, you turn it into this corny church, dude. I ain't trying to hear it. I'm just not. And then he found something. It's no different than fishing. You're throwing <laughs> out the lure, trying to find what the fish going to buy. <laughs> and he found something that I bid on. He started to talk to me about my soul. Mmm. And I'm like, he had my attention. Ooh. I said, okay. Well, once you hit that. Yeah, boy. yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's telling Ooh. me about some stuff that most folks don't go. I mean, people listening now go to church and ain't hearing about the soul. Or you may hear it being mentioned, but nobody's telling you where it is, what it is, how it works, how to guard mm. it. You don't hear those things. No. So he's telling me about the soul and something just registered. And after him telling me more about the soul, this is what I decided. I decided that I was going to pray because I always prayed Mm -hmm. and I decided I was going to pray to God and I was going, and this was my prayer back then. I said, Lord, my brother's telling me that the only way I can save my soul is by accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I don't know anything about Jesus. I don't know anything about the stories. I don't know anything, (laughs) but he's telling me that this is the only way I can do it. And that's all I want to do at this point is I want to save my soul. That's all I want. Yeah. So I said, Lord, I'm going to pray that you have mercy on me. Mm. When it's all said and done, this this is when I decided I'm going to give up everything and I'm going to run to you, God. Mm. I said, I'm going to give up everything. I'm not selling drugs no more. I'm not doing drugs no more. I'm not drinking. I'm not going to the club. Literally, I'm shutting it all down. How old are you at this point? I am late 20s. So you're late 20s, 27, 28. Something like that, yeah. And I decided I'm done. I'm giving it all up. I'm calling on my homeboys. Like, look, I'm telling y'all I ain't doing this no more. Wow. Don't even call me. Look, I'm not even be, I'm not even playing middleman. I'm not even taking you two stuff anymore. I'm done. Mm. I'm letting everybody know. And then I said, Lord, I'm going to run to you. I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to skip. I'm not going to play. I'm going to run to you. Wow. But at the end of the day, when it's all said and done, if what I did was wrong, I just ask that you have mercy. Wow. Because all I want to do is save my soul. Yeah. And he told me this is the only way I can do it. Wow. And then after that, I pray, Lord, take people out of my life that don't need to be there. And bring people in that need to be there. My phone stopped ringing for the next seven days. Mm. And after that, my whole circle of friends just start changing. Folks didn't want to hang. Lemire trying to do this. You know, they think it's a phase. Right. Oh, Lemire trying to, uh, they tempted me. One of my partners came, picked me up. I don't think he said two words to me. He came, picked me up. As soon as we got in the car, he rode to the to the spot, go in, get the bag, come out, go into the corner store, come out through the swisher in my lap, didn't say anything. Uh, and I'm just like, huh. 
after I just prayed, I said, you know what? I'm straight on this. I'm straight on you. I'm good. I'm not doing it today. I've told you I'm not playing, man. Wow. I'm good. And I went to, and right before this, me and my partner, we was at the club. And we so out of it, man. I mean, we was, I was probably gone before I even got in the club. We in the car just throwing them <laughs> back, like, Man. ignorant just drinking for no reason uh. and we're in there drinking some more and i'll never forget as i'm sitting there you remember those old paintings or those old pictures where they got like the wood frame and the pictures oh, like made yeah, out of velvet <laughs> my mom got those yeah one of the old school <laughs> pictures yeah your mic probably too young to know about them uh, pictures you i say got. my mom yeah, has yeah, those yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as i'm in this club i feel like like literally everything went in slow motion mm. and i couldn't hear anything and I was now I'm looking at the dance floor, but I'm actually looking at this painting. I'm having a vision. Damn. So I'm having a vision and it's titled People in Hell. Mm. And I'm watching these people just dancing and kicking it and having a good time. And there's no music and it's all in slow motion. And I'm literally watching this frame, this velvet picture, and it's in slow motion. It's like happening while you're right. Like right, right in the, in the middle of the club. Damn. And I'm just and it's the first time I've ever had a vision. Wow. And I'm just like, I'm watching this and my mouth is just like, and you automatically be like, am I the only one that's seeing this? Like, <laughs> what is happening? Like, I really don't know what's happening right now. Mm. And then right around that time, my partner who I was with turned to me, get ready to say, you ready to go? He couldn't even get his words out of his mouth. I cut him off. I was like, yes. Damn. And I've never been back since. And that's right after when I start calling folks because that, that it blew my mind. Yeah. That's when I'm like, dude, I ain't going out no more. Right. I ain't drinking. Yeah, that's I ain't, it. Man, I'm done, man. That was crazy. I can't even explain that to folks and it makes sense to people. I'm just like, dude, I'm just, I'm done, man. I'm good. <sighs> and, and that's man. been, what, 17, 18 years wow. since I've done any of that stuff or wow. kicked it or any of that stuff. And here I am, man. Man. So I bet people are, are, are wondering now, like, so... Has he talking to his father yet? Does he visit his dad? Does he have a relationship with his dad now? So, hmm. so let, let's let's fast. Forward. So today, I, I you mentioned on the the interview with formerly Show eighty three uh, that that you did visit, mm -hmm. um, and you said you you took or he wanted to see the grandchildren, and you said ah, <laughs> we ain't going there, buddy. Right, right, right. Let's. let's I'll come see you, but don't talk. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so let's let's talk about that visit and why you decided to 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 go visit him. Sure. And what was that 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 conversation like? So that was a part of my spiritual maturation. Yeah, and I had gotten. That so at that point, have you forgiven him? Like, well, that was part of why we were going to go. Ah, so my yeah. intention was Rome went with me. Mm. Him and I went. And I forget, I'm sure I had to initiate it. But, you know, we drove down to the prison and my intention was this. I said, I need to look this man in his face and let him know some things. I also have some questions about some things. I bet. And, you know, I'm going to pray for him, you know, and we're going to be done. That was that was all my intention. Wow. So we get down there and we're there for hours <laughs> and he talking the whole time. I'm like, I'm not interrupting. I'm not emotional. I'm not. I'm not even asking any questions at this point. He's just talking. Wow. He's doing the majority of the talking. Did that surprise you? Uh, no. Mm. No. Uh, I mean, I, I welcomed it. You know, yeah. talk. Say what you got to say. I mean, yeah. you know, I ain't heard from you since the trial, brother. Talk. Say it all. Get it out. Yeah. I asked certain questions near the end, but I just let him talk. Yeah. And this is what changed my mind on the whole prayer portion. <clears throat> As I said, I wanted to pray for him. Right. I said... What happened Saturday, March 12th, 1988? You asked me straight like I that? I asked him, yeah. Wow. <laughs> and he was like, why you asked me that? I said, because I, I want to know. And you're the only person that can answer it. Like, wow. what happened? And he was like, oh, that's that's the year I caught that case. I'm like, for real? <laughs> you caught a case? That's how he just Yeah, yeah, like it was like a cold or something. Like, you caught a case? I said, <laughs> right. I said dude, that was the year you killed my mother. Caught a case. You caught a case. As he remembers it. <laughs> so in my mind, oh, wow. ain't no remorse. So we ain't ain't no praying going on. Like this is ten. You wanted something more than yeah, yeah. Like, I wanted really something. Do... Right. You you was just so detached, like you didn't even do nothing. So I said, you know what? We can't even pray. And I still wasn't mad. 
But I just like, but when you don't have that type of remorse, I can't pray for you. You seen where he was at. Yeah, so I saw where you're at, so we, we can't do that. No big deal. You just show me where you're at. Okay, no problem. Wow. And then somewhere in the conversation, Man. and this was probably near the end, as I mentioned, I listened to all him, him talk. I didn't interrupt until he said, you know, everybody, because everybody know how I feel about my boys and how I love my boys. I'm like, whoa. No, I don't. You you can't sell that to me. Talk I, about his sons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how you felt about your boys. Because every picture I've ever seen with you and me and my mom, they were all in prison. Mm. Every picture, you was in jail. Mm. So I do not know. Now, every picture I see with you and Rome and Rome's mom, oh, y'all was kicking it. Mm. Getting ice cream, having a good time. I mean, wow. that's man, that looked like a good life right there. Uh. Maybe he knows, but I do not. And you cannot sell that to me right now. I'm sorry. I wow. listen to everything else, man. But no, please, brother, do not sell me on that one. Wow. No. That's when I had to jump in. Now, I'm still not ignorant i'm still not causing no ruckus or whatever but i just no i can't i yeah, can't you ain't gonna sit there and be yeah, a fool yeah i ain't about to listen to that man come on <laughs> yeah. man and your mind you did but no you i, I can't go for that wow. so i told him i said here's the reason why we're here i said because what i want to do is i want to make it to heaven and i don't believe that i can make it into heaven with hate in my heart uh. so as a man i need to look at you as a man and let you know that i don't hate you Mm. and it ain't just lip service like i mean i don't hate you wow now at the same time wow. i don't love you mm. because to be honest with you mm. i don't know how to feel about you mm. most of my life you have not been around right so i'm kind of indifferent towards you i've learned for many years how to live without you yeah but i just know that i don't hate you anymore i used to but i don't hate you anymore you wanted to kill him yeah so i have to look you in your face and tell you that that's why we're here I wow. said, I'm, I said, you didn't win the father of the year. Didn't come to, you know, to rekindle the magic. And you see my yeah, kids. I miss you, and, Dad. Yeah, and <laughs> let's start a life together now. Let's pick up the pieces. I'm not here for none of that. I'm not here so you can know how many kids I got to meet my wife. We're not here for none of that. That visit was for you. Yeah. If you wanted to do all that other stuff, you shouldn't be in prison. Mm. So we, I, I, this is for me to, to so I can fly high because I can't leave this world with this weight on my shoulder and stuff in my pocket. Wow. You know, it's like me trying to jump and dunk a basketball, but I got pockets full of stuff. You got to get some of the stuff out your pockets. Yeah. You can't go through the metal detector with all, you got to get your belt off, your shoes off. So that's, that was what that was, was me getting my belt off and my shoes off and lightening my load so that I can grow and fly, be able to share the story yeah. and impact people in a positive way. Wow. That's why we went. When, when, when he was just talking, what type of things was he was just talking about? Was it, was it stuff that meant something or was he, was just rambling? Like, and I'm sure probably Rome was probably asking him questions. I'm uh, sure I was, but I don't remember, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, just kind of how you grew up. And I mean, I think a lot of it was just, he hadn't seen me since I was 12. Right. You're... So it's just like, you know, if you can imagine just seeing anybody you hadn't seen in forever, you you look, I want I got everything to say. Yeah. I don't know where to start or where to end. I'm just going to talk. Yeah. And you can stop me at any point. I'm just going to go kind, yeah. kind of like I've been doing this whole <laughs> podcast. Like. So yeah, 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 he yeah. just talked, man. I asked him where, where my name came from because I'd always but it's curious. Yeah. I'd always thought it was French. And I told people that forever, you know, La Mier. That's my, <laughs> my name is French. It means light. Yeah. And I'm, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. And I asked him. And the reason why I asked them is because the documentary is called Tomorrow. Yeah, your middle name. My middle name. Yeah. And my mother has only ever addressed me by Tamar. Never called she you? never called me Lemire Day in my life, ever. Really? In a school setting, ever. So common oh. sense to me was my dad must have came up with that name uh. because my mother refused to use it. Uh. So knowing their relationship. Uh. So I asked him, I said, where'd that name come from? And he's like, I gave you that name. And I'm thinking, oh, I knew that much. Right. <laughs> so what does it mean? He said, you don't know what it means? He's like, it's Swahili. Mm. It means the chosen one. The chosen one. I'm like, oh, that's fresh. <laughs> yeah. like, I need a T-shirt. Like LeBron, you, you got the wrong one. Wow. I'm the chosen one. And my, and my brother, like, man, how he the chosen one? And my name's Jerome. How did I get that name? Right. I feel, I feel you wrong. Right, we, right. Got, we got the same name. I feel you. I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. But now, when you hear this whole the story, 
and then look at it now, doesn't it make sense that I'm the chosen one? Exactly. The chosen one to tell this story, the chosen exactly. one to pick up this mantle, to yep. pick up the pieces. Everything that happened, it was supposed to happen. That's now, it didn't wow. feel good at the time, but I was chosen to walk this walk, man, yeah. and to go through this, to be able to turn around and come out and tell somebody else, help somebody, to let folks know we not doing enough with these people who are going through traumatic incidents. We don't we don't help them enough. We don't care enough. We don't give enough resources. We just think that they're supposed to magically be fine. Right. People still crying in the shower. People homeless. You can hear a homeless person's story and we'll probably be similar. Yeah. Or right or be even deeper probably, than mine. Yeah, like, probably even and we don't be caring. Right. We'd be riding past them. Ew, he got a sign up. Right. No, I ain't saying go give money to everybody and whatever have we can't help every situation to everybody. Exactly. But uh, again, just you know, I've just I've been chosen to, to carry this mantle, man. Wow, man, that, that's that's amazing. That's crazy. That is a crazy story. Right. Man. It's almost like fake, right? Like for right. real, it's like fake. for real. Not to mention that when I was living with that aunt, you know, I stayed there for five years, uh, then I left. Mm. I went. I went to go live with my family up north. Man. I just we just weren't seeing I I I I just wasn't. Just wasn't connected. I'm just like, you know what? If I get my grades up, can I go stay with my aunt and uncle, Brittany Hills? Yeah. And my grades were so bad. <laughs> like, if you get your grades up, you can do whatever you want to do. <laughs> so I'm working with this girl at the time. We even came up with this fake grade card. <laughs> I bring home this fake grade card with this fake story. <laughs> it's like, where's the real grade card? Well, I still owe library books. So they wouldn't give me the actual grade card. I couldn't to return these library books. So they just gave me a printout copy. Because <laughs> the grades is fake. That's why you didn't get the, <laughs> the printout copy. Yeah, so I got the printout with the fake grades. I got the uh, magnificent grades. So she took it and, and withdrew me from, at the time, I was at 4841 Livingstone Avenue. Uh, That's Walnut Ridge for all the mortals listening. <laughs> So I was at Ridge. Yeah. So I left Ridge the, the second half of my junior year, uh-huh. moved up north to Beechcroft. I didn't know but, what, two people there? <laughs> so I, I get there. Uh, and to further the story, I lived with my aunt and uncle for about six months. Mm. And, I, and I just walked out the house. <laughs> you just walked out? I didn't know where I was going. Didn't really care. Just Damn. walked out. Because at that time, remember I talked about that money I thought I was supposed to be getting. Oh, yeah. Now when I go live with my aunt and uncle, I'm getting that money. Ah. But they want to charge me rent. Oh. I'm like, I'm a senior in high school. Like, I'm your blood family. Like, rent? (laughs) What? This check I'm getting is $277 a month. Like, (laughs) rent? (laughs) So they asked me, they was like, well, how much do you think you should pay in rent? I'm like, well, I guess half, I guess. I guess I'm, I mean, <laughs> half of 200, I don't know how much that is, but half of $277. They said, no, nah, you're going to pay 200 So now I got $77 a month to buy everything. Like, I have to buy my own clothes. I'm buying my own deodorant. I mean, anything for senior dues. Any pick, I mean, I got to do all that with $77 it a month. It was taking 200 from the thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I stayed there for about six months, $1,200. Oh, yeah. And then on that particular month i got my money i'm just like man i'm going to the mall uh-huh. man i had to buy me some shoes i just went and got fresh and i started avoiding them for like two three days i'm, just, I'm trying to shake them they gonna forget i gotta be fresh my senior year yeah. and so they was just like listen if you're gonna be staying here you're gonna need to come off that bread i'm like well i guess i ain't gonna be staying here because i spent it <laughs> so straight up oh, yeah. i left <laughs> Went around the corner of my partner's house. I was like, look, man, I need to use your phone, man. I need to call some folks to see, see where I'm going to live at because I can't go back there. Yeah. So I'm calling my one uncle, and he like, look, man, you need to go back to your uncle's house. I'm like, dude, I can't. I'm spending the money. <laughs> I'm calling folks. Everybody shooting me down. I yeah. hang up the phone from all these calls, and I literally don't know where I'm going to go. Yeah. And I'm still a senior in high school. Wow. And my partner, whose phone I'm using, his mom overheard all this, and she's just like, you can stay here. Wow. I'm right there on the spot. I had never met this woman in my life. Oh, wow. Never. And she just walking you in. Now, keep in mind, he, he and I are friends. Like, we're homeboys. Like, yeah. we hang. But she never met you. Never met me. And she just said, you can stay here. Wow. And she let me live there. Wow. And she treated me no different than she treated him, man. He got $50. I got $50. Wow. If, I, if he had the key to the car, I had the key. Wow. I mean, literally, she made me forget that my mother was dead. 
Wow. Said I called her mom, and I mean, it was just amazing. And as they say, coincidence, we had the same birthday. Oh, man. So that's what I mean. It was just supposed to <laughs> be, man. Crazy. It all just lined up. I mean, even when I went to Central wow. and I'm in line for registration, she right there next to me. He wow. started at Central with me. So him, him and I and her all in line. I mean, she was there when wow. I needed to come home on the weekend, wash my clothes. I didn't need, he didn't have to be there. I mean, she was mom. Yeah. So she held me down. Wow. And, 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 and That's that, beautiful. Yeah, man. So, yeah, man, that, that's that, that's a crazy. The name of the docu series is going to be Eleven No Again. Yes, it's Tamar. Tamar, his middle name. Yes, T Y M A R. Yeah, I'm pretty sure people are wondering when are we going to get it? Right. When can we watch it? Right, right, right. <laughs> is there a link going to be in the description <laughs> to click? So, what's the the, the status with the the docu series? Are you still filming? Still? Yes. Okay. Yes. We actually will go back into uh, production. Next Saturday, ah. as you can imagine, everything has halted as the world had halted. Yes, you know with the pandemic and yeah. things. But we were fortunate enough that before those things happened, we had been recording for about a year before. Oh, okay. so we had so much content yeah. to a point where the idea started with okay, docu series, one series. Yeah, I mean, excuse me, one series with you know three volumes. Okay, but now it's just like we got too much content and we still have so much to go. Yeah. It's probably going to be seven, eight, nine. Oh wow! Yeah, because when you talk about an hour long, forty five minutes, whatever have you. Yeah. So as of right now, we're working towards the first series nice. for like the winter. Nice. To be finished by the winter, so people can check that out. Yeah. Right now, you can go to our YouTube channel, you LTD go. Channel Six One Four. Yep. To get more information. But we're literally trying to put it in a space where uh, people can go on and purchase it and watch it themselves. Right. As opposed to having to, you know, go to big box Go office. through the whole, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this ain't their story. <laughs> right. I mean, it'd be different if I was trying to sell it for a quick buck, but yeah. it's, it's too personal and it's too dear just to kind of prostitute it, if you will, right. for a meal or whatever have you. Like, no, I'm going to hold this We want close. all the licenses. Yeah, I'm going to keep all the rights. <laughs> and it ain't about, I got to keep it. But like, no, because generally what happens is when you deal with those companies in those spaces, the first thing they do is like, we love the story. We love the fact that you, you've gone through so much and you're able to tell uh, the, the positivity in it. We're ready to reshoot it. No, I'm not going to uh, I'm, I'm not going to take my family back through that. Right. We just had these interviews yeah. where I literally just cut it open. Yeah. And we no, we, I'm not going to do that. Now yeah. if we were, you know, for the sake of just money, we would have to. Yeah. But before that for the sake of the healing. Yeah. Uh in the the good space mentally, I'm not going to do I refuse to do that. We're going to take what we got. Yeah. We're going to roll to a quality standard where you can look and it'll be like, "Oh, I feel like I'm watching uh, this or that platform." Yeah. But yeah, we're not going to do that. I'm yeah. not going to do that to my That's good. Stay grounded on Caramel. it. Yeah. Man, Lemire T. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> oh, man, the chosen one. Swahili. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I think I might title that the name of the episode, The Chosen One. Hey, there it is. <laughs> I think I think that's fitting for, for the title. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> the Chosen One. Love it. Man, any last words for the people? Anything you want to? Oh, hold on! Don't be giving me no. Oh, you yeah, got you yeah. got something uh-huh. you want to give yeah. me? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I did. Yeah, he he said he brought a gift. He's about to get out of here with nothing. I forgot all about it. Uh-huh. I, I got so caught up in the conversation. <laughs> yeah. So the first thing I have for you, is yes, hot off the presses. I don't even have one of these on myself. Oh, is this is the tomorrow T-shirt for those oh. who are watching? This is go ahead, the, yeah, show that to the camera. Yeah, right for, there. for folks who are watching. Or not watching, I should say. It's yeah. the all white tee with nice. the tomorrow logo on it. So I got it in your Ooh. size. So that's for you. So Thank I got that you. for you. You're welcome. Oh man. Now I know you're kind of uh, young in the mic, so I don't know if you got a. <laughs> do you have a DVD player? Uh, I don't. That's oh, because I know I figured you did. <laughs> but I have a, a Xbox that can work as okay, a DVD so player. There you go. So we actually have the. Uh, for those who are watching, we have the trailer here on the DVD. Hey. So we actually have that. With some uh, promotional material inside. Oh, nice. So this is for you as well. Nice. And I've got just some extra promotional material oh, for you man. to pass along, business cards, oh, for whatever. Sure. You have. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't come empty handed. Oh, man. So I'm putting the, pressure, putting the pressure on all your future guests. <laughs> right. They're going to come in here empty handed. <laughs> Lemire T didn't. Right. Oh, I'm going to set this so, up. Oh, man. There you go. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, you're oh, this is great, man. This is great. <laughs>
<laughs> um, make sure y'all follow uh, Lemire T and connect with him. Uh, if anyone's out there listening who may need some wisdom, some guidance, if, if you're you know looking to get into um, like photography, videography, if you want to know how all that stuff works, if you want to just connect with Lemire on a, on a personal tip, share your story. Yeah. Reach out to him. He's yeah. an open book. Absolutely, as you can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, don't don't be shy. Hit him up. Hit me up. Let's do it. Uh, make sure you uh, follow the podcast, Cloth Talk Podcast, uh, on Instagram. Everything Cloth Talk Podcast, Facebook and IG. Subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Uh, drop a comment. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I'm pretty sure y'all love, love this one. Um, if you're listening on iTunes, Spotify, uh, any of those apps, go ahead and subscribe, rate, and yeah, show your boys some love. Once again, it's been another episode of Cloth Talk Podcast. We'll see you again next time. Peace. Peace.